welcome to the 10th insight in this beginner base light series. So today we're gonna to have a look at blending layers in base light. We're gonna do this in two ways. We're gonna have a look at the blend strip and we're also gonna dig into the blend control panel and I'll show you where that lives in a moment. So let's start this one off by talking about blend strips. So you can add a blend strip to blend between two different inputs within base light. So let me give you an example. We've got a clip here from the mother died practice project and what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on it, hit Command C, and then we're gonna hit Command F to paste. Command F is force paste within Baselight, and it's the correct pasting operation if you wanna copy and paste a strip like this in Baselight. So you can see when I force pasted that clip, uh, the bottom layer is now active, and the top layer is not. So this clip is not being referenced or shown in the Baselight timeline at the moment. I wanna blend between these two clips, so I'm going to click on the bottom clip, and add a blend strip with the shortcut key Alt B. And now you can see that our base layer as well as our blend layer is now active. If I undo that with Command Z, the other way to do that is going up to the insert menu and adding a blend here like so. Now, because these two clips are identical, we are not seeing any difference. So if I lasso these two clips and bypass them with Command F11, you can see no change. So what I'll do is I'll click on the blend strip. With the blend strip selected, the parameters view turns into a set of options for us to tweak. We can adjust the mix, the mode, and the color treatment of this blend. This shot's looking a little bit dull, so what I might do is go to the blend mode and change that to our screen blend mode, which will brighten up our image a little bit. This is a lot, so we wanna dial it back so we can adjust the mix of these two layers using our mix slider. And around 22% might be the sweet spot. If I want to preview the before and after, I can go ahead, let's do these clips, Command F11, and you can see that is the original clip, and this is the duplicated clip blended back over itself using the screen mode. The blend strip could also be used for a variety of other contexts. If you're adding film grain or any other overlays, um, you can go ahead, import your film grain in, and blend your strip using a variety of blend modes to get the desired result. So that's blending inputs using the blend strip. Let's go ahead and clear this away. And let's discuss the slightly more complicated blend control panel within Baseline. Before we do that, let's go and add a few grades. I'm gonna add a new grade layer with the shortcut P. And within the base grade, I'm just going to increase my balance. So I'm going to click and drag clockwise to increase my balance. That's a little bit too much, but this will be good for our example. And to keep things nice and tidy, I'm gonna go at the top left and rename this layer. I'm gonna add one more grade layer with the keyboard shortcut P, and I'm gonna to go to the video grade, and I'm gonna add some green, <laughs> some quite strong looking green. And we're gonna call this green layer. So with the green layer selected, if we have a look at the result blending sub panel, you can see that currently the toggle is all the way to the left, which means that our green adjustment is fully active. It's fully opaque. When we drag this to the right, you can see we are making this layer transparent and the green effect is no longer affecting our image. Now, the blend control panel can be found on the bottom right-hand side of the result blending subpanel. And if we go ahead and click this, you can see that it brings up a slightly confusing looking interface. So let's break this down. Starting at the bottom, we have exactly the same slider as we did here. So on the left, we have fully opaque, and on the right-hand side, we've got fully transparent. Let's explain top to bottom what's going on in this interface. So starting at the top, you can see that we have a layer input. Now this layer input is the layer directly above our green layer. So in this case, it's our increase exposure layer. So that's our starting point. Going down on the left hand side, you can see we have our grade operations, which in our case is this green gamma adjustment. And then we travel down here to the left hand side. So when this slider is fully to the left, it's fully grading in this green gamma adjustment. When we drag the slider fully to the right, you can see that we're bypassing our green grading operation, so therefore it's not active within our grade stack. So there's an A side and a B side. If you wish, the grading operation could be moved to the B side. So if I go ahead and click this tick, you can see now the grading operation has shifted to the B side. And now if we're fully mixing to the B side, we've got the green. And if we fully mix to the left, we have no grades applied. I'm gonna click the tick to get the grading operations back onto the left-hand side. So to summarize, we have a layer input, which is the layer above. It travels down either the A or the B side or a combination of the two and mixes down to the final image. Now there's even more that we can do with this tool because if we look at the B side here where there's no grade operation and we click on this little drop down, 
you can see that we don't have to reference the layer input above, which is our increase exposure layer. We could actually reference the raw image. So if I go ahead and click this, so now if I fully drag to the right and click out of the blend control panel and jump up to our input layer, you can see that this is exactly the same as our green layer. And that's because we bypassed the green layer and the increase exposure layer to blend directly back to the raw image. This could be used if you wanted to dial back both your green adjustment and your exposure adjustment, and you could drag to reduce the intensity of both of these adjustments at once. Already you can see that this tool is quite powerful. I'm gonna show you one more example of what this tool can do. I'm gonna drag fully back to the A side and change this back to the layer input. I'm gonna click out of here and add one more grade layer, and we're gonna call this circle shape. I'm gonna add a shape using the keyboard shortcut S. And again, don't worry too much about this as we haven't covered this yet. I'm gonna hit the quick shape and create a vignette. I'm gonna decrease the feather. I'm gonna to jump to my grade layer with the keyboard shortcut G. And using the video grade tool, I'm just going to introduce some purple into the image. Just to neutralize some of that green. So now with our circle shape layer selected, we're going to jump into the blend control panel. And over on our grade operation stack, you can see that we now have an inside and an outside because we have a shape layer. Let me show you an example of how we can use this inside outside functionality to achieve a different grade look. This circle shape is introducing purple into the midtones, but because our green layer is directly above it, and that's our layer input, this purple adjustment isn't really making the image purple. It's more just neutralizing the green layer input above it. If I wanted to make this purple adjustment stronger, what I could do is go to the inside of this shape here, and I'm gonna select the raw image. So the circle is now more purple, but let's just work out what we've actually done here. So we have the raw image as a source coming into the inside of this shape, which is making this purple adjustment a lot stronger. Our green layer input is coming in to the outside of the shape as per it was before, traveling down through our A side and being mixed fully to this left-hand side. So if I move this mixing slider fully to the B side, we should expect the purple circle to vanish because the purple shape is on the A side. So if we go ahead and mix this to the B side, there we go. You can see that our circle disappears. If we mix this all the way back to the A side, you can see that our circle shape, using the raw image as a source, has reappeared. Okay, so going back up to our circle, even though we've bypassed the green layer, we haven't actually kept our increased exposure adjustment in the circle. So the image is a little bit darker in the circle than it is everywhere else, which is an issue. To fix this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the inside layer and instead of referencing the raw image, I'm going to reference a numbered layer. Nothing immediately happens, except now you can see we can change this layer input from our input layer to our increased exposure layer. Gonna go ahead and click that. Now you can see that we still have our strong purple color, but we've kept the exposure adjustment that's affecting the rest of the image, keeping it consistent. So I think that's where we're gonna stop because this gives you a really nice introductory flavor to the blend control panel. You can go really crazy with this. You can see I can go ahead, have multiple inputs, introduce blend layers. You know, you can start to go really nuts with this tool. At the end of the day, if we just delete the circle shape, click our green layer, click on the blend control panel, just remember that this is an expanded view of our slider. If our toggle's fully on the left, it's blending our A side entirely. If it's fully to the right, it's blending our B side entirely. The best way to understand this tool is to experiment and to see what results you can get. Okay guys, and that is the Blending Layers Insight. I hope that was really helpful and I will see you guys in the next Insight for some more primary grading techniques. For MixingLight.com, I'm Luke Ross.